Thank you so much for joining us, Jacqueline. First, let's start with your title and how you're involved at ASEE. Sure. I'm the Chief Academic Officer and the Managing Director for Professional Services. ASEE is made up of several sectors and the Professional Services houses academic services, education and career development, ECD, fellowships and research opportunities, FRO, institutional research and analytics, IRA, and P12 and DEI. So it's a lot of different areas. So what learning services are available in ECD? Let's start there, and who are they for? Education and Career Development has houses also Learning Services, LS. So within Learning Services, there are different courses and webinars, um, and they can be customized. Uh, one of the most prominent are the Delta um, courses, which um, help with build leadership at all phases of a faculty career. As ASWE members are largely edu engineering educators or faculty and administrators, um, those are, are really our targeted audience. So what new specialist consulting programs have been implemented in academic services? Well, the specialist program is within um, academic services, and what it is is our members can apply to be an ASWE specialist. And you're reviewed, you put in an application, reviewed by your peers, and then when ASWE has consulting opportunities, then we go to our database of subject, subject matter experts in order to match our members with potential opportunities. So tell me about the new student programs that have been implemented in academic services. Services. What we've been doing lately is we had focus groups and in surveys in order to reach out to our student members and we want to build infrastructure and a one-stop shop for our students. One of the things that came from the students is they wondered about scholarships and activities they can do. Well, they're right now embedded in the hundred different divisions. So we're surveying all the divisions so we can pull out and put in one place where students can look at what are the scholarships and what are the activities they can get involved in. So that's coming soon. So what's the new strategic objectives plan in ISD? The strategic objectives plan is actually the headquarters operational plan for the strategic plan. And so it runs from uh, 2020 to 2023, and it, it really mirrors the board's goals, but then it operationalizes what are the outcomes that we at headquarters are supposed to do in every instance. So there's a strong membership focus, there's a strong DEI focus, and so it, it helps organize what we're supposed to be doing in headquarters um, and also it communicates to the board, which really has new members every year, what is it that we are doing in headquarters and how does that move forward? So that sounds like why that strategy was implemented. Yes. So what change do you hope to see with this new plan? In the DEI, we looked first at promising practices. Today, I'll be holding a session for people to help us prioritize those promising practices. And then next year, we'll be implementing those we prioritize. So it just helps us to be able to communicate out. This is the window of time for everybody to give us input. And so briefly summarize the importance and the impact of ASWE. ASWE helps us do our job better. I, I myself am a lifelong educator and started in automotive industry, but then I've been a professor and a chief academic officer. And so at every part of my career, there were ways to get involved with ASWE. There, we're a community of practice, so you can talk to somebody who's not your boss, right, mm -hmm. and get insights and share best practices and talk through how would you do something. So um, I think that that's the most important thing, the community, um, the connections, and the opportunities for education and engagement. It sounds like a wonderful program and a lot of great changes ahead. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. My pleasure.